In this episode, we're still exploring the Netherlands. And after the hustle and bustle of Amsterdam, we're spending a few days in a national park. As cycling novices, we're going to take you on a ride in one of the many national parks using electric assisted cycles. So we'll let you know our thoughts on them and if they're worth considering. But unfortunately, we have another disastrous driving fail. Only this time in the city of Arnhem, as we end up driving down a cycling only lane. Welcome to the channel. That's Harry, our camper van, and that's me, Jane, and here's Stu. And we love to share with you our van life adventures. Keep left on the due towards fast trip. Today we're heading east to a campsite at De Steg. And as you can see, it looks like there's certainly enough lanes to choose from. But first, we stop off to have lunch at this amazing orangery, which is part of the Castile estate in Rosendal. We just have a light lunch on the patio before a quick walk around the front gardens. The castle was originally a medieval castle, and it has evolved ever since. And apparently, although we haven't confirmed it, that this in the Second World War was not only hit by an American bomb, but it was also partially destroyed by a German V2 rocket. You can pay to enter the premises and discover more of the grounds at the rear. We've booked to be in this area for three days. And this is what happens when you leave the baby with naughty grandparents. And Stu wanted to test out his directing skills and camera shots. Let's just do go. the music. No, go, no, no, go up, 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 higher, higher. Right, down. So today Milo is safely with his mum and we're off for a bike ride with Matt. We're off to the Sayulasso National Park. And a great way to see the park is to hire electric assisted bikes, which is exactly what we did. We've rented some electric bikes. It's the first time we've been on them. Uh, so we're using the assist on it, obviously, and it's uh, really impressive, to be honest. Uh, but it's a beautiful area. We're just cycling around, got a packed lunch. The weather's going to be cooler, which is good, to be honest. Nice little uh, campsite where we're at. It's at a place called the Steg. Yeah, that's how you pronounce it. The cost is around 30 euros per night, including hookup. But there are options, so I suggest you check with the website. Uh, so it only takes about 20 um, vans or tents, depends on uh, who's there. There's nice, nice clean facilities. The toilets, showers. Our site worked out really well because it was close to where Matt and Emily were stopping. And Stu serves up his signature pilaf on the first night, although the weather unfortunately did break. One o'clock tonight, so we're just on the edge. It did say so rain overnight. We're frustrated, although frustrated isn't the word I'm thinking right now, that our ramps have been stolen. Stupidly, we left them on our pitch when we went off for the day, mainly to tell people that we're coming back. And obviously they didn't get the memo. There's something really soothing about watching a hot air balloon, but you wouldn't get me in one for a million dollars. And happy days as we found this square pizza in the local shop that fitted into Stu's beloved Ridge Monkey. Uh, so do you get assist ones and ones that you have to put, put switch on and switch off then? Are they different ones? They're all this assist type thing like that. It's amazing how uh, that makes a difference. Morning. So we went into Arnhem this morning. I wanted to go and have a look at the bridge there because it was famous in World War II or one of the bridges and part of um, Operation Market Garden where they were to take the bridges leading its way hopefully for the Allies to get into Germany and end the war that much sooner. Unfortunately the operation 
only was uh, partially successful and they never got to this bridge which was the furthest bridge and the officer in charge was John Frost who the bridge is named after now and I think they rebuilt the bridge um, in fact they're having celebrations this weekend they're there so they're setting up but I had a bit of a nightmare of driving into Arnhem <laughs> for some reason I got myself into a bit of a mess ended up down a cycling path driving down there we got stopped rightly so Yeah, there's a nice event here. Oh, is it? Oh, is that what you're doing? It's uh, just a Yeah, 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 that's what we're here to say. Oh. Where did all this place from? It's not obvious. It's not obvious. I did see a sign. But it's not obvious. I've got oh, pictures of the camera all over the place. I'm missing something with this f***ing <laughs> driving. What's the bridge too far? Airborne on. Turn right now and then enter the roundabout and take the first exit. I don't know where I'm going. Right. Curb, curb, curb. Yep. In 300 but we've just been here. We've just been here. Oh, no, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm still confident. The stress of driving down a cycle lane. I'm in the middle of the <laughs> road. Okay, yeah, but you've got a van in front of you. That's a bus lane. That is a bus lane. Right, well, I think this is the take bridge. Take the first exit now. Okay. okay. Okay, so you get ready to take the, the photograph of the bridge, at least. Taking you is a lot more fun. It's a bridge too far for me. What the hell is that? What's that on top of this car? It's like a Google uh, car. Oh yeah, it's a camera, it's look. Camera, it's camera front camera and front back. Actually. We might end up in Google. <laughs> I'm just going to do like, going down a cycle route so far. Mm. Which wouldn't have been so bad if someone hadn't seen us. <laughs> it was nice enough for them. It was. So we never, never managed to find a park up in the end. It was just too stressful. So we managed to drive over the bridge and back again. And this is the famous World War II bridge in Operation Market Garden. And it's depicted in the classic film of A Bridge Too Far. So if nothing else, Stu wanted to at least drive over the bridge. But that then caused us a real problem. We struggled to find our way back over the bridge and we got lost in the multi-lane traffic. I'm going to go to Santa's new destination. Hands up to the mail, it's <laughs> self-comforting. I'm, I'm missing some signs somewhere in Netherlands. I'm, I'm like literally missing them. I'm struggling with the junctions. I'll follow the street cut wherever he goes. Go. <laughs> Even if he's travelling to Belgium. <laughs> Right, where that yellow car is. No, it's not where the yellow car is, it's where this black car hasn't gone yet. Right, but where are these people going that are next to you? They're going down here. That... Right, so it's telling, what that sign's telling us is that we can't turn off here, but we can turn off the next one. I think that's a buzz line, that's why I can't get I want to get in this flyby and I can't. It's no good losing our lives. But you're confident that we're going over the bridge. I don't even know where the bridge is now. Never there. How is it? You're terrible, you only have to turn, turn off once. Oh, you no. lost. These rooftop sculptures we assume are a nod to the airborne soldiers parachuting into the area. And finally, we managed to find our way, but for us, it was definitely a case of a bridge too far. This is cycling's equivalent to a complicated junction in Arnhem. We just stopped because of some uh, cows, cattle there, got horns on. Uh, the young calf that you saw there was all great. Unfortunately, I didn't get on picture, but suddenly made a lurch for Jane and started to uh, sort of charge her towards her bike. So she fortunately hid behind the bike and, and it stopped. Uh, I think he might have got for her actually. This is the exact moment that I could see from the look of his face he was going to go for me. 
and without a doubt he would have charged at me if it hadn't been for my son. And needless to say, we're a bit more wary when we come across this next group. And as you can see, there are plenty of places to stop and take a picture. And it's a great contrast to the hustle and the bustle of the streetlight in Amsterdam in the previous episode. Please give us that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you've liked this episode. So as you'd expect in the Netherlands, the cycle wing is just fantastic. Uh, they've got just cycle lanes everywhere. And in the National Park here, it's all gridded. So you can easily map out a tour and the posts tell you uh, what to go to, and your next one on and all that. You can't get lost if you map out a route and that. So easy. You know, I'm not a cyclist by any means, but uh, I have to say on, on the e-bikes, it's... <laughs> It's a great way of getting round. Just been talking about uh, having them on Harry when we're you know, maybe cycling to some local villages and that. I think the uh, Jane's not so keen on it because of security. She doesn't want to be worried about the cycles inside, but which is a concern, I guess. So if you have them, how do you find travelling with electric bikes? Please let us know in the comments. So if you get a chance to come out to the Netherlands and, uh, and you've got bikes here, uh, you're in for a treat, I'll be honest with you, if you get to the National Park and that's some uh, lovely scenery. You can easily hire them. We've hired these actually from where uh, Matt and Emily are staying at the hotel there. They hire the bikes out, so we can find a for bikes for us. Well, it's time for lunch. So we stop at the Priestnets Monument, and it was named after Vincent's Prinets, who died in 1851. He was considered as a founder member of modern hydrotherapy, although what we didn't find out was there a reason that it was in this exact spot. And I love this picture that Stu's taken of his lunch because he's got halfway through the sandwich before he remembered that he hadn't taken a picture. Well, we were cycling for around two hours, and without the assisted bikes we would never have covered the distance or seen the sights that we saw. So it's definitely a 10 out of 10 from us. And also, when you couple an electric bike with the cycling infrastructure in the Netherlands, it makes for a great experience. And one that we'd not only recommend, but we can't wait to repeat. And we'll see you next time as we head back into France where we travel through the picturesque Zeeland and we have a surprising stop at a very welcoming air. I find that unbelievable.